So very privileged to have, I say straight from Croatia, but sort of via Croatia. Um, very privileged today to have um, Layla from the Croatian National Tourist Office um, to tell you about this amazing destination firsthand. So um, she's going to um, start the presentation today um, live, live not from Croatia, but New York, but that's okay. Um, and then right after uh, that is uh, Nicole, a uh, CA member and another big in, um, expert on Croatia is going to take a few minutes to tell you about some special items that she, uh, she'd like to share. So over to you ladies. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Beth, and uh, hello to everyone. Thank you for having me here today and hope to provide a little bit more insight about Croatia and what it has to offer. So I guess that now my slides will be shared in full screen. So welcome to Croatia. Welcome to the story about Croatia. My name is Leila Kresik. I'm director for North America, so USA and Canada based in New York. And I've been here almost two years. However, now we recognize Canadian market is super, super important and getting really exploding. It's about to explode uh, the same as the U.S. did last year. And we are so happy to provide more information and a really in disposal for whatever you may need. So my aim today is just provide a few facts, but also a little bit of inspiration later. So for those who are not so much familiar, even so I, I know that now already you know where are you going, uh, Croatia is in the heart of Europe. That's what makes us so attractive and that's what made us so attractive to so many empires in the, in the, in the past who actually were conquering, but all of them left their footprint. Such a, So making practically this country so, um, so beautiful as it is today. So it is a Mediterranean uh, country on this coast, however, also with the climate, uh, with the continental climate uh, in, in the inland. Uh, what is important for you also is, even though we are a small country, but we are a member of the European Union since 2013. And since last year, we became part of Eurozone. So Euro as a currency is uh, now spread all over Croatia. Uh, and we are part of Schengen area, so the world's largest visa-free zone. So today's highlights, I will just uh, give you a little bit of um, more info. So if you can see the red other parts that you may see on your visit to Croatia this year. So I've been informed about your itinerary, so I try to mark red what made, the made it you, what would make it uh, makes it more interesting. Uh, what is important to stress out, we have more than 1,200 islands. Here are some of them. The coastline is more than 6,000 kilometers long. And for such a tiny country like Croatia is, it's really a lot. We can say that we are full of nature as well. We have eight national parks and the highest percentage of protected areas in any other single country in Europe is 36% of protected areas. You will on on your on your uh, from the boat. You may pass near Miet National Park. Here it is. It's an entire very green island. So, so um, furthermore, Croatia has ten UNESCO World Heritage sites. Uh, some of them you will also see in, in Split, in Dubrovnik, in Stari Grad. Possibly depends on exactly what you do be um, doing as your excursions. And but definitely, when on Hvar, you will see. Eight, uh, sorry, six UNESCO intangible heritage elements that that island features uh, out of the 18 that has all over Croatia. It's mainly about the singing, it's about um, uh, processions, it's about uh, uh, some kind of uh, different ways that we are doing uh, things and it all has to do uh, with a lot of uh, heritage from the old times. It's all, it's a melting, melting such, sort, sort of a melting pot, I would say. In addition, Croatia is full of flavors. It's home to the world's largest white truffle found in the world. And today, since like six, seven years, since 2017, actually, we got the first Michelin star restaurant. Now we are getting more and more every year. So wherever you stop, you can find a fantastic Michelin star restaurant. But don't um, forget the taverns, the so, so we call them konobas. And there you can eat the same as great as in Michelin star restaurant as well. Croatia is full of stories, but the main story, please, just keep in your mind it's football it's all about football and uh, it's just i mean european football soccer and this is something that we have so many so much proud that we ranked second and third on the last two championships however did you know 
the, the first tested parachute was invented by the Kurat guy called Faust Franz Rancic in the beginning of 17th century. Did you also know that the necktie, the cravat, actually it's invented by Croatian, by the Croat soldiers who were wearing that, and the French were calling that in the war with uh, Napoleon Wars at that time. And the Pencala, or pen, but Pencala was the name of the guy who invented the first mechanical pencil that we use every day still today, no matter the, the computers. And also, this is one interesting story you may find out on Hvar Island. Ivan Vucetic was the inventor of um, taking and archiving fingerprints. So today you have a museum in Hvar. We'll come back, back later a little more. And Nevera, the fastest and strongest electric car in the world, who beat, of course, won the race with uh, with um, Tesla. It was uh, produced by Rimac um, factory. And Rimac is the name of the guy who is the inventor. Uh, since 2009, it uh, has been the fastest electric car in the world. However, however, finally coming to the North America in February 2024. And one little detail, Dubrovnik was among the first countries to recognize independence of the United States, for example, uh, in 1783, which also shows how much uh, advanced was the culture at that area at that time. Even, you know, the slavery was abolished in the Dubrovnik Republic at the beginning of the 15th century. So the creation has changed. Well, how we dress, we write, we drive and we live. Let's now experience it yourself. And but before you leave, you go to Croatia. Let me explain a bit more about few regions. So we have several regions, 10 of them are let's call touristic regions. We are going to see the south the, and the mid. So from uh, Dubrovnik, Hvar, Korčula and Zadar. So Dubrovnik. It's called the Pearl of the Adriatic, the King's Landing, but at the, at the end it's UNESCO heritage site. On the entire city is practically the heritage site, I mean the old city. There are two kilometer long walls, many fortresses, rector palace, the Straduni, which is the main street, a lot of photos, all the photos are made there. You can go and scroll in the evenings listening to Trubaduri, which is a part, of, which is a sort of a group of singers and, and musicians singing on, even in the streets today. Dubrovnik, mm, however, it's so much, we talked so much about it, but try if you have time to go up, uh, taking just a cable car, it's five minutes drive, to go to Search Hill and then overlook Dubrovnik. More you go toward the down and you will be uh, traveling beginning of October, if I remember. So it could be actually great, uh, four or five o'clock would be a great time to visit and to see, to enjoy the views and try gastronomic delicacies in the area. Uh, there is also another city very nearby in the island of Korčula. It is th this island practically takes everything, shows everything what Croatia is in only one island. You have very strong winemakers since the history. There is a lot of olive oils also being the, produced and super high quality there. And there is a story about Marco Polo, famous legendary Marco Polo, who lived there. There is a story about that his birthplace. There no no one ever scientifically proved, but very we are very proud to have lived to to have lived. Uh, uh, at the time of Marco Polo that was in, in Korčula. Uh, the most impressive is the San Marcos Cathedral as well as this monumental land gate that you can see here on the photo. And the entire Korčula, if you have time and you need it, literally need two, three hours, you can even go outside of the main city and visit the island, uh, scroll at some of the beaches and enjoy uh, what this beautiful area has to show. It's unspoiled nature combined with very high level of aristocracy and it's always something which I'm impressed when I go to Korčula, you always find you just you find and you run into the people who got so high level of education, but still all over the world and want to come back and live in Korčula. Nearby, there is an island of Mlet. I guess you will not be have some so much time to see it, but take take uh, try to see the Lokrum Island or some of the uh, nearby islands to Dubrovnik area in that region. For those who will stay longer, who can who have time to a fam trip, I definitely suggest to visit Pelješac Peninsula, which is only one hour from uh, Dubrovnik, and to uh, go. Of course, you're gonna make the, you're gonna not gonna make the, uh, all 5.5 kilometers of the town walls of stone. But it's important to say we call it European Wall of China. It's the long longest um, walled uh, uh, city, lo longest walls after the Great Wall of China. And uh, what is else in stone? You have the salt plains and you have oysters, farms of oysters all around. So 
once you enjoy the oysters and uh, you eat something better to say you can enjoy the wineries there are a lot of small wineries this is just one very typical of the dingage uh, wine which is sort of uh, um, let's say parent the parent of all of them it's uh, in, the, in the split area and one of the sons or grandsons would be tim Fandel. you know it very well and the other is plavat mali and dingage which is sort of plavat mali so Croatia is full of hundred more than 100 indigenous varieties of wines, which makes it so unique. So if you are a wine lover, gastronomic lover, you want something special, just go to uh, Pelješac Peninsula and get immersed into the wineries, go through stone, taste the oysters if you love them, or you can even go half an hour further to the man- mandarina, man- to find mandarinas in Aretva Valley, which they, they will be already there in, in October. You can also, you can, you can even have them with the harvest of mandarinas or grapes uh, at that time of the year. In split area, so for those who will uh, make a, a short uh, um, uh, excursion to split, yes, this is a palace of the Emperor Diocletian, home of what it, what it was Dalmatia even in Roman times, and it um, has been built uh, 1700 years ago. Uh, this is something impressive and really worth visiting in the times in the time of the law. Um, however, what is the something which all split people go? It's Hvar. Hvar is something that we all adore. I'm also from Split, and that's why I didn't want even to talk too much about my, my city. However, if you, uh, so we will have more time in Hvar. Uh, this is the city that has it absolutely all, and not in vain it was proclaimed the most awarded island um, uh, in uh, Croatia and in Europe by Condé Nast Traveler, Travel and Leisure, Wanderlust, and many others. I just put a few that are more, that you may heard, of course, about. They, they feature the greatest, um, the largest uh, square in Croatia, uh, in Croatian cities. Uh, you have all this archipelago in front. The, the water is definitely Caribbean blue and you can still swim in, in October. Moreover, it's beautiful time to swim. There is there are not so many so much crowd. There is an old fortress. You can go and uh, climb this fortress, you can see. And there is something which is definitely adorable. And it's hopefully my slide will move. Yes. Uh, so Hvar City features the oldest European public theater that was established already in 1612. So just to remind you, at that time, only the theaters were only made by aristocrats who were very wealthy. So it was actually a private theater usually. But Hvar people who were living there there in 16,000, they had the necessity to be culture and to be educated. And they actually built a public theater from themselves, which is something very typical in Croatia. It also happened in Split and happened in other cities, but this is the oldest one, one of the oldest in, in Europe and still public theater. Uh, Hvar, as mentioned earlier, has six cultural assets or elements on UNESCO heritage list. So one, it's a procession taking place uh, at Eastern time. Then also, they're very proud of their way of living, healthy living. It's Mediterranean diet. They literally follow on a daily basis. A cappella singing, art of dry stone walling, uh, lace making from Agava, and um, a starry grad plain, so which are lavender plains uh, very nearby the city. And hope you will have time to enjoy at least a few. What is a must once there? Uh, definitely, it's, I mean, we will be overwhelmed with with food. Uh, find the time and try in this region in Dalmatia, try pastizada uh, for meat lovers, of course. But for example, I'm vegetarian, I can still eat this. Not maybe so much meat, but it is a beef a steak marinated at least 45 hours, and you can really enjoy it with homemade mochi, gnocchi and the sauce, which is prepared with local red wine. On the, for example, on the way from Hvar to Zadar, you will run into Kornati Archipelago, which is mostly Shibanik region, but you pass by, and there are hundreds of islands uninhabited, so it's more for really enjoying the sailing and the landscape. And a few more words about uh, Zadar. Uh, Zadar is the um, a city that used to be capital of Dalme- Dalmatia. It puts together the, the history and the tradition, but also the modern times. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock once said that Zadar has the most beautiful sunset in the world. So the, the Zadar people built the so-called attraction. Um, uh, it's called Sun Salutation, uh, which ensures a spectacular waterfront, waterfront light show at this area, as you can see on the photo. Here is a city, it's a small peninsula, and you can really run it in half an hour, in one hour, of course. There are a lot of UNESCO protected fortification, the towers, the churches, so you can 
also enjoy the OC organ. This is something very, very impressive. So depends on the wind, depends on the waves, you hear the sea singing. And that's why it's called sea organ, just for the meditation. You enjoy this natural orchestra. If going a little bit further, you can visit for those who saying of hand trip, you can visit uh, Nin, the oldest Croatian royal city with the smallest cathedral in the world, the Church of Holy Cross, only 36 spaces. And still Maraschino, not to forget, it's a famous drink, a liquor made from the native Maraska or sherry. So there are a lot of factories in, in uh, southern region. That is. So once there, do not forget to ask for Marenda when getting out of Dubrovnik or Chula, uh, Hvar or Zadar, doesn't matter, it's all Dalmatia and it's sort of a branch that we all take, uh, it's just as shown in, here in the video, no matter where are you from, no matter what hierarchy are you in the company, they all sit together at the table and they eat with a spoon, that's how we call it. It's a very healthy meal and it's something that we are very proud of and I must also discover a little detail, it was not, we just kept it for ourselves, it has been only since last year, we opened it to, to tourism, to travelers, actually showing how we eat, how we live our lives. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon, if not in Croatia, then in Canada. With Nicole, CA member, and very uh, well-versed uh, in Croatia to tell you about some of her personal experiences on this amazing destination. Over to you, Nicole. Thanks, Beth. Hi, everyone. Um, I, like Many of you love travel with uh, Croatia being one of my favorite destinations. Um, I consider myself a bit of a Croat file, if you will, sort of a love for everything Croatian. And I love sharing my recommendations for places to stay, what to do, and just anecdotes from my uh, personal journeys. Um, like Leila mentioned, Croatia is definitely a destination for foodies and a place where you can eat your way through the country and enjoy some delicious wines. Um, actually, one of my personal uh, food obsessions from Croatia is truffles. And the first time I had truffles was uh, on my honeymoon and it was love at first taste. So I highly recommend you have a truffle dish when you go. Um, Croatia, what can I say? Uh, like Leila mentioned, I mean, it's a beautiful country with a gorgeous coastline, you know, over a thousand islands, um, medieval cities like Dubrovnik. Um, it's just, it's a country that really blends, I would say, the old with the new, um, and just, you know, the modern with, with the heritage. Um, but one of the, my favorite things about Croatia really is the people. Um, I feel like, you know, Croatians, when you go there, they're going to make sure that you have the best time possible. It's all about being the most incredible host and showing you all what Croatia has to offer. Um, you know, from your cab driver, from, you know, people in the hotel, a restaurant, even just walking down the street, um, you're going to you're going to feel that Croatian hospitality. And that's that's one of the things that always sticks with me when I go there. Um, I was lucky enough, actually, last year to host um, five events planners from Toronto who came to experience Croatia for themselves. And after the trip, I asked them, you know, if you had to describe Croatia in one word, what would it be? And one of my favorite answers was a uh, heartbeat. And I'll read you the, the answer. It was, um, everyone was so kind and the local people shared stories made me feel like I could hear the heartbeats beaming through. And I, I think that's, that's the one thing about Croatia. Again, there's so much to offer, but there's, there's something intangible. There's feeling of just kindness, realness, authenticity, um, just incredible experiences. Um, and I, I think that's what you'll, that's what, if you go to Croatia, you'll be able to experience and you'll really, really feel that. Um, I know Leila mentioned some of sort of the hidden gems um, in Croatia, and I have to concur, the Pelješac Peninsula, a must. So that's uh, Croatia's main wine region. Um, for those of you from Ontario, I'm sure you've heard of Gergi Chills from um, California. So it's a Californian wine. Um, and the winemaker behind it is called Mike, he's called Mike Gergic. Actually, he just passed away um, recently. He was over 100. I don't, don't know exactly how old, but over 100. Um, he was the winemaker behind um, the Chardonnay in the uh, 1970s Judgment of Paris, where 
it was the first time a Californian wine um, beat out a French Chardonnay. So that's kind of exciting. So if you're in uh, in the area in the Penichets Peninsula, he actually opened a second winery in Croatia. Um, so you can definitely go check that out. I mean, there's so many different other, there so many other ones, St. Hills, uh, Corda Caterina, so many different ones, but it's just a little, a little uh, anecdote there. And uh, also you must visit the oyster farms in the town of Stone. That is, it's phenomenal. Such an authentic experience and a delicious, delicious experience. I actually went um, with my sons a few years ago, little boat. We went out with a oyster farmer, literally taking oysters out of the bay, fresh out, shucking them on the boat with a little bit of lemon. Um, most delicious oysters I've ever, ever had. And even following that, we went back to the, um, to the shack, I guess, or the little fisherman's house, whatever you call that. And we were able to enjoy oysters with homemade wine. We, they had uh, musicians, um, traditional tamburitsa, which is a Croatian guitar, banjo. I don't know how I would describe it, but something similar to that. And we just enjoyed um, the oysters and wine as the sun was setting over the bay in Ston. Um, some of my favorite moments, um, actually, I don't know if I mentioned or if you could tell, but my background is actually Croatian. Um, so for me, it's all about food. A lot of it is about food. And I grew up with my mom and my baka, which means grandma in Croatian, um, you know, cooking traditional Croatian dishes. And one of my favorite cr- tr- uh, dishes is um, štrukle, which is essentially a pastry uh, filled with cheese. It's a savory dish. Um, delicious, very simple. It's very much sort of a villager's dish, um, but it's, it's a lot of work. You've got to roll out the dough um, and I could never get it right. And I decided a few years ago when I was in Croatia, I took a cooking class on Strukle. I have to say they're amazing. The ones I make, my mom was impressed. So I got her seal of approval. So I think that if you're ever in Croatia, definitely do a cooking class. You don't have to do shrukle. You know, you can do fish stews, uh, different pastries, uh, meat dishes. One of the, you know, most, um, what do I, well-known dishes in Croatian, it's called uh, under the peka, which means under the bell. And it's essentially, you know, oyster, um, sorry, um, meat, or or uh, octopus with veggies that are cooked under this pot under the bell um, with all charcoal. It's phenomenal. So that you definitely need to try, or do the cooking class and do it and make it yourself. Um, my other favorite moment, which I know that you're all going to do uh, Dubrovnik, is visit the Dubrovnik walls, but at sunset. The golden colors, um, you know, the sparkling sea. It's it's just so. I'm going to say romantic. I don't know what other word to use, but it's just romantic, beautiful. It's it's it, it's an experience. Just walking the breeze. I think it's something you'll you'll be able to see all of Dubrovnik with the terracotta rooftops, the orange rooftops, and just um, you'll have. Sometimes at night they have even musicians playing. You can stop. You can enjoy a cocktail. But I definitely recommend going to the walls um, of Dubrovnik. So I mean. Sort of to finish up, why Croatia? I mean, why not? No, I'm kidding. But but in all honesty, I think think you're going to be shocked with what a country um, as small as Croatia has to offer. Uh, With everyone I speak with after they've gone to Croatia, they're, they're all in awe. They didn't realize, you know, the landscape. The, well, maybe the beaches. I feel like beaches and islands people know, but the landscapes, the architecture, the food, the people, the soccer, right? Um, that's one thing. If you're looking for a souvenir, I have two suggestions for souvenirs. Get a soccer jersey and make sure you get the old school, you know, white and red checkers. That is authentic Croatian. Or um, get yourself a tie. Uh, Leila mentioned the tie was uh, invented by Croats. Um, but it's just... I really think uh, Croatia is this, has an intangible quality that when you experience a country so small, you know, thinking it's it's a country of less than four million people. So when you compare it to these larger, uh, better known destinations, perhaps you don't think Croatia has that much to offer. But you know, between the award-winning wineries, between the Michelin restaurants, um, you know, the five-star hotels. Croatia really has has it all. And they also, you know, the nature, the konobe, which we Leila said, it's the um the 
traditional small restaurants, taverns, I really think that when you go there, you're going to fall in love with this country. It's, it's a small country, but with a big heart. So I really hope um, you enjoy your trip there for those of you who are going and bon voyage and also uh, in Croatian, sretan put. Bye. <laughs> That's fantastic. It sounds like you're going to eat, drink, explore, eat, drink, explore. And again, or eat, drink, whatever, explore. Eat, drink, explore. Yeah, eat, drink, travel, repeat. Yeah, that's that's Croatia. Yeah. So if you're that if was, you enjoy wine and food, this is your place. That was fantastic. Thanks, Nicole. I'm I'm ready to go. Hopefully, everybody listening here is ready to get on our cruise and uh, and head out with us. So, without further ado, um, thank you once again. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Kad ti se kaže marenda, šta je prvo što ti pada na pamet? Kad ono, ujutro radiš pa ideš marendat. Nema tu i težaka i gospode iz kancelarije i... Nema klasne razlike nikakve. Nikakve, mi se svi ili se volimo ili se ne volimo, to su Dalmacija, Dalmatinci. Marenda može biti jako, jako jednostavna, a može biti jako, jako komplicirana. Kuhanje je po meni jedna vrsta umjetnosti. Mi svaki dan se nešto mnogo stvara. Ti okusi, te arome, odnosno ti začini s ovog područja, sigurno znači čine razliku od ostatka cijelog svijeta. Slijed je pogođen kad kušaš vino nakon hrane, kad se to harmonično sljubi i da to bude ta gozba za nepce. Miris je predivan. Mm. Ovo je fantastično. U ovoj Dalmaciji gdje god zabodeš pirun, zapravo si zavog pirun u raj. Mm. Hrana je ovdje prevažna. Dok se ruča, priča se šta će sutra biti za ručak. Kod nas ide pisma i priča uz hranu. Koji je naš problem? A, problem je ovaj. <laughs> Malo ga promišam. Mi uz dobru hranu nudimo i to da čovjek stane. I da se opusti i evo, pogleda recimo Absolutno. malo iza Absolutno. sebe. U nekom dobrom društvu. U nekom ja? dobrom društvu. Naravno. Ne strah da nestane, mogu još malo. Naravno, naravno da možeš pričati.